Hello chaps, it's John with you again. Yep, here I am back. And it's time now to start building the Panther. Okay, it's the uh, fifth one in my little series of uh, classic Tamiya kits. Um, first up we built the uh, Panzer IV, then we did the Tiger One, we did a Tiger Two, and uh, just finished the uh, SDK of Z71 Fleckverling. Okay, which is a beautiful kit, an absolutely beautiful kit. That was the nicest so far. Okay, so we're doing the Panther now, the Panther A, not the new Panther G or any of those. Okay, this is the Panther A. This is the one that came out originally in 1968. Um, originally produced as um, uh, as a remote control model with two motors, and then in 1969, then they. Uh, basically just took the motors out and sold it as a static kit so you can buy both versions of it. Um, not much has been done to it since, uh, just reboxed and reboxed and reboxed. Uh, probably cleaned up the moulds a bit. Uh, it says at one stage to put in new parts but uh, nobody seems to know what new parts that ever went into it. Even on scale mates it doesn't really specify what parts, what new, what new updated parts went onto it. Um, but anyway, okay. This particular version of it came out in, uh, as in this particular boxing of it came out in 1988. So it's still a classic kit, okay. Um, if anybody watched the unboxing, I was looking at the box, and along I was, you know, going through the different version, new kits that they were coming out. Well, well, not new kits, but the different kits that were available within that series. And I came along across the one that was uh, the hunting tiger. <coughs> now I must admit I was wrong. I kind of got totally mixed up. I just took a quick glimpse of it. I didn't actually take a proper look at it. And I thought they were referring to the uh, the king tiger with the Porsche turret. And I went off and said that the um, that it's the uh, the Porsche didn't actually make the turrets. The, ports, the turrets were made by um, uh, Krupp, which they were, and the guns were Rheinmetall. But the, uh, the, the 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 chassis they went with was the Henschel chassis, and uh, the first say lot of turrets were the uh, the ones that were originally designed for the Porsche Tiger, King Tiger. That's why they were called the Porsche turret, and then you had the Henschel turret. Which in other words, which was the, the the main production turret. Okay, so um, when I actually did the unboxing, I looked across the thing. I went hunting tiger, and I referred to all that as the hunting tiger. The hunting tiger is also commonly known as the yag tiger, which is basically just one solid piece. Okay, it doesn't have a separate uh, turret. So I do apologise for that. Anybody that uh, picked up on that, and a couple of people have picked up on it, and um, I do apologise for that. I was wrong. Okay, so anyway, let's get down to this kit, down to the panther and let's start getting it built ok, so we'll go down to the, uh, the bench we'll uh, start as usual with the instructions um, I will go through them then step by step as I build, marking it off then what I've done with the green highlighter dead handy, handy little tool to have um, you know whether result you're only doing a small step or a big step, because you can mark then in a different colour bits that you, know, you want to put in later on um, you know, if you're putting in uh, on different kits, not in this one, but if you want to put in, say, glass and other bits and pieces, then you can go down those lines. Now, I also said that in the unboxing, that I was probably going to build it directly out of the box, uh, no um, damage or anything like that, but uh, I've decided against that. I'm going to do a little bit of damage here and there, just similar to what I did with the King Tiger not too much, I'm going to knock off one of the fender fronts and a little bit of uh, shell impacts I'm also going to try a little experiment Right, this kit does not come with uh, PE grills or even um, mesh grills but um, I've picked up a bit of uh, I don't actually even know what it's called Somebody might know what it is. It's kind of a mesh. It's used in dressmaking. Raffa, you know, it goes under a dress, then to kind of keep it puffy up, and it's very, very similar to um, to the, the the mesh that it comes with um, with the Zvezda kits that Zvezda often use. And I've even actually it did come with um, 
came with the uh, flak furling for the, the mesh bits and things on that. Um, but this stuff now is uh, it's used for in dressmaking and uh, like I said it's used for under under a skirt or something just to kind of puff it out a bit and it's uh, which I'll show it to you when I get there um, so I'm going to do a bit of an experiment what I'm going to do is you know see will it glue onto things and um, I'll do it all uh, say as part of this video I'll show you the stuff we'll have a look at it and uh, if it works then it works and you know it might be a nice alternative for some of you people out there that uh, buy a kit that doesn't have say mesh grills and you want it to have mesh grills mm -hmm. instead of going off and spending a fortune on an aftermarket uh, set will this stuff do um, I'm all for that kind of thing you know saving money uh, you mean money that you save on one kit is money you can put towards the next okay so why spend a fortune on aftermarket mesh grills and things like that it's okay if you get them cheap or you know or you can afford to go off and buy them then off you go you know i'm not dissing you in any way shape or form when it comes to that kind of thing but um if you want to save a few bob and this one this little idea works then yippee we'll go for it we'll go for it so without further ado let's get down to the bench and let's get started i'm building the panther panther a from Tamiya. Okay, so here we are down at the bench. I have my uh, my sprue cutters, my knife, sanding stick, and my glues all ready to start. So let's get started. And what we do is we start with the instructions. Um, like I said in the unboxing, you have a nice little write up there on the Panther. Okay, but we're going to the Panther. Now we're going to start with build. Okay. So, we go along and we've got our first four steps, okay, on the first page, right, in step one we're constructing the rear panel, right, on the rear panel we've got the two um, um, storage boxes, we've got the, uh, the exhausts, we've got uh, the jack, okay, so they're all just going s straight onto it. A little bit of clean up, make them look nice and uh, and clean. Deck off any seam lines and things like that, and glue them into place. Okay. Then we're on to the um, the the lower hull. Okay. We're fitting that rear panel on. We're also fitting in the the uh, our shafts and things. Okay. So we'll get them done as well, and we'll the wheels okay now as you can see being a panther there are lots and lots of wheels okay now I'm going to fit the wheels they've got little poly caps on them which is dead handy for when it comes to the painting because that means you can put them on when you're fitting everything and you don't actually have to um, glue them in position and uh, later on then you can come back pop them all off put them onto little sticks and things and get them painted quite ne nice and neatly um, it shows there the fitting of the wheels how the wheels will be fitted okay and the making up of the uh, drive sprocket okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the first four steps made okay step one two three and four right I'm going to get them all done um, when it comes to here, okay, it shows that you're, um, you've got to fit these ones first, this one first, then these two, and then that one in on top of it, okay. There is a way of doing it, you actually make up these, okay, in, in one piece. So you've got, say, a double here, single, a double, a single, a double, a single, a double, a single, a double. So what you do is you make them all up, and with fiddling around you'll, you'll fit them on um, I'll just, when we get to the, say, that stage when we're having a look at it and have it all done and all cleaned off and everything else it basically the next clip shall we say um, I'll have it all done by then and I'll show you what I mean about trying to get you know fitting them all on in one piece it's actually not that hard and I can say that because I have built this kit before okay so therefore it's something I already do know and it's how I did it the last time and I'll do it again in this one so we just, uh, you know, you you can. I, I find then once you once you have them all painted and everything else, 
you can kind of glue them into place if you want at that stage but um, why bother because it's easier then for painting if they're actually separate pieces okay so we get them done our first four steps we we'll come back we'll have a look at that okay a little bit of discussion on how it went was there much cleanup uh, what the parts were like and uh, we'll, I'll show you how to fit the wheels on that as well okay so we get all that done and I'll be back to you okay so here we are back to the instructions and as you see I've them all marked off in green so therefore I've them all done okay um no problems <laughs> it's a Tamiya kit and everything freaking fits in perfectly absolutely perfectly now that's not to say that the aunt Tamiya kit has had the odd few little fit issues but definitely not this one and not so far okay um just have a look at the back plate there first i'm going to be careful there because as you see i've only fitted the wheels at one side like i said i would i said i'd show you an easy way of fitting all these okay there we go there's the back plate everything feels absolutely beautiful okay um no problems with that whatsoever all right so when it comes to the wheels just a little hint for for marking the wheels okay it gives you two different types of the double wheel now I have failed to find any difference whatsoever but I've made them up as they were supposed as, as I was told so what I did was I just marked the inside of that with black okay now there's only one of these right um, where are we to, to, to the double one there we are back here if you notice it's a c8 on the front whereas the rest have c7 on the front okay see there c8 there on the front wheel whereas the rest of the front wheels are c7s one at each side so with this it's a permanent marker and what i did was i just marked the inside there's just the rubber and it's the same then on, on, on these ones again like I said there is one supposedly slightly different I haven't found any difference in it whatsoever I really can't find a difference so why they're marked differently I do not know right I'm, I, I'm finding no difference no height difference no difference with bolt patterns depth of rubber you know this piece here the drop of threads the back you know both those once you put them together the height of this little pillar here seems both the exact same the only difference is that I have found is that that the hole is uh, slightly slightly thinner okay so therefore it's got a thinner hole to go with uh, the, uh, the thinner piece on that right so like I said how 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 can you fit all these once these are together and attached? And I will show you. Simple as that. Okay. So first of all, we can, we can actually we will start with the back and work our way forwards. Don't put it all the way on. Just leave it. Just leave it dangle. Okay. So we're starting with our uh, marked black one there, and let it dangle. And it's as simple as that. Okay. Just let them dangle out. I have to be kind of careful. I mean, they may fall, like when I was doing the other side. Uh, it, I had a wheel pop off, and I sp spent about five, five minutes looking for it in the floor. It just, where the hell could it have got to? It's not, you know, it wasn't a carpet monster thing. It was the fact that it rolled. Wheels tend to do that. And in the case of where the feck had it rolled, and it rolled under a press. So it took me a while to fucking locate it, but uh, hopefully now this time I won't get that same problem. But as you can see, well, everything looks as flimsy as hell when you put it on, and yep, it is as flimsy as hell when you put the mine. Right, and then just drop everything into place. Okay. And then put in your poly caps. Right? These are the poly caps. I'll put in one. 
just for pig iron. Okay. We we, we put the one in out here on the uh, on the idler. All right. Now there has been no, that not really so much on that one, but that one's that's pretty clear. But there's no there's no harm in just giving it a quick rub of your uh, of your hobby blade there because the odd one or two of them just have a little bit of flash and it might affect the uh, the, the depth and how, how how they go in okay so probably get fits over there and pushes in and it's the same with all of them and then we'll have uh, you know roly roly okay so everything will fit back in now I'll do them all of them finish all of them now in a minute it's pointless doing all of them in camera only wasting your time and wasting mine okay but it's not really wasting my time because I've got to do it anyway all right so they've got us moving from the lower hull straight on to uh, the torus okay so we've got the construction of the gun barrel we've got the barrel there two-piece barrel we've also got the uh, mantlet three pieces there in the mantlet uh, with the escape hatch here on the back of the um, the back of the turret, and then we're fitting our base and things there onto the turret. So I'll get it that far. I'll get as far as no, I'll do step eight as well. Sure, I might as well. Why not? All it is is just a couple of handles and a couple of hooks on that. Okay, I'm not going to do the figures. Not at this stage. Well, we'll do them at a later stage. Um, Okay. Also, it shows here about uh, you know with the um, with the with the hatch, heating a screwdriver and uh, popping that in. That actually works very easy. It really, really is very, very easy to do. Um, I use a zipper, a zipper to stick it on, and heat up my my screwdriver. Don't have it red hot. You don't need it red hot. Just have to heat it up enough and just pop it down, and it'll just kind of flatten out the edge, so therefore it won't pop off. Very easy very easy no, no major problems with that okay so I get as far as step 9 okay skipping step 8 with the figures my god they've actually made a whole step of the figures I'm not going to do the figures I, I usually wait till everything is done the reason for that is that uh, you can you can adjust the hands and all that perfect once you've everything made in, in place and uh, I don't like playing around with it until then shall we say so we've got uh, some hooks here on either side we've got some handles and we've got the commander's cupola the ring and the machine gun and the same again then I won't fit the machine gun until uh, a later stage the point is having it it's a bit too flimsy we leave it till the very end but uh, you'll see what I'll do now is uh, anything I'm leaving till later I'll mark it in orange so next clip I will have the turret made Okay, so stay tuned for that one, and uh, I'll be back in two secs. Okay, and here we have step um, five, six, seven, and nine completed. Step eight was the figures, and I haven't done them yet, hence marking them off in orange, as with the. Um, the, the machine gun up here, the um, MG34, I haven't that put on yet, so therefore I'm marked it in orange again. Everything else is on. Now, again, no fit issues. Well, you could say a slight fit issue, a slight fit issue with this little back plate here when I set it in to place. Um, I know, I don't know whether it was a fit issue or I didn't kind of push it down into place because I'm trying to remember back when I did the last one, did I have the same problem? And I, I don't think I did. But uh, easily got around. I just had a little slight little gap along here, and as you see, just use a small little bit of uh, sprue glue to fix that there. And sprue glue is basically um, melted sprue. Simple as that. Um, it's old bits of sprue mixed with uh, to me an extra thin. Leave it settle inside, and it just goes to a kind of a sticky, gooey liquid. It's the name sprue goo because it's made of sprue and it's got it's goo. Okay, so as you see, the uh, the door escape hatch there opens and closes as well. It's not a great fit, I must admit, but it 
box anyway, okay? Alright, just so sort it of drops down a little bit. But, you know, for what it is, it does the job and it's quite, I'm quite happy with that. Um, the gun barrel, lovely job, that went together. Now that's two piece barrel, and believe it or not, the seam line should be along the top there. But they were such, it was such a good fit with that barrel. I'm going to get an extra bit of light over there so you can see what I'm saying. Okay. It was such, the pieces went together so well that you wouldn't even know it was a one piece barrel. Okay. That is absolutely lovely. Right. And all the uh, little attachment pieces there, they're all fitted as well. Okay. All the little uh, accessory hooks here on the side. Okay, all the accessory hooks there on as well. Um, so really, I I had no I had no problems with that whatsoever. I uh, I found it, you know, quite adequate, and everything everything fits absolutely beautiful. Then again, you know, these old classic to me kits they just work. They really really do. And like I said, I mean, okay, they may not be 100% uh, accurate and all that, and there might be sort of slight discrepancies here and there with how parts are, and you know, um, there isn't very many pieces to fit onto it, but it all works, and I'm happy with it, I really, really am. Okay, so we're on now to the uh, getting involved with the upper hull, okay. Now we've got this little uh, doohickey thing here that fits on the inside. Um, that's really for, uh, shall we say, for, for, for fitting it in, okay? F um, when you want to be able to uh, take the, the top of the off and on, okay? Um, really for when the uh, motors were fitted just so you can get into the change the batteries and things like that you, you had a kind of removable now i haven't decided yet whether i want to glue the uh, the top down to the bottom or not or to um use the uh, the fitting on it um i might actually sort of glue the top down in other words get the tracks all fit get the wheels done get the inside of the uh the, you know this painted if you know what I mean get the wheels back onto it and then you know cover cover over that you know get the get the whole tracks on mask it all off put the whole lot together glue it all in place and then do the, uh, the, the do the, the spraying of the main body while the bottom of it was already sprayed I don't know I haven't decided yet we'd worry about that when the painting comes along so in the meantime I will fit this little Yoki Bob to Hickey thingy down there okay um here we've got fitting for the uh for the figure okay now the figure sort of i don't like how it's fitted because he basically gets th th this piece here is a little uh it, it's shaped like that okay and the figure get th that bit here at the top gets glued to the top of the uh of, 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 of the deck well, the underside of the deck, shall we say, and the figure gets glued. His back gets glued onto it there, you know. Um, it would be nicer if he had a kind of a little seat to pop into. So what I might do is, I might actually make a little plinth for him to sit onto. So therefore, I could get the whole lot painted and I had add him in afterwards, rather than you know. Um, try to glue him onto that little thing and stick it up and then trying to paint the figure inside there or what I might be able to do is I might be able to sort of paint the figure uh, before I paint the upper hull do all that and then you know mask him off so there's loads of little uh, little little um, things that you kind of have to decide at this stage really what you're going to do you know um, so I'll get all these done anyway, and then I'll worry about that. Then I'll worry about that, that I'll work with the little plinth thing. Because if you work with the little plinth thing, you won't be able to really see his hands. You'll probably have to cut his hands off to get him in. Um, but the fact that I'm not uh, gluing the top onto the bottom as yet, I'm not doing it till the actual 
painting section I don't really have to worry about that too much at the moment right now on to step 10 okay it's the gun barrel carriage or the travel lock or whatever you want to call it Low the different names for it okay we gotta get that made up we've got to do the uh, utensil container okay which is the uh, container for the cleaning rods and things and we've got uh, utensil a rack a and utensil rack b okay they've all got to be kind of constructed up as well now what i'm going to do with these is believe it or not and i normally don't paint th I, I know what i normally do is i paint the tools on the vehicle all right but uh, this time what i'm going to do is i'm going to sort of fix these things onto the vehicle and then paint th all the uh, the accessories sort of um, on the, still going painting them on the vehicle but I want to put these things on first then get the whole lot painted and then fit the uh, accessories onto that and then do the detail painting with them on it like that it's just an easier way of doing it don't know why but it's just it, that's what works for me that's how I like doing it I don't like trying to paint the uh, in tools individually and then go sticking them on because the glue kind of makes the paint run a bit and things like that so I don't like the way that does it but what I might do is I just fit them on f in, in place on the vehicle and then um, after the whole vehicle has sort of got its camouflage and all that kind of thing then put the tools on and then do the detail painting on them whereas the other tools these ones here I will fit them straight onto the vehicle and paint them in situ okay does that make sense makes sense to me anyway whether it makes sense to you or not now I do not know but it makes sense to me and I'm happy with that okay so then we're on the inside of it okay we've got the um, we're fitting the, uh, the 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 mechanism there for the um, the driver's vision hatch thingy okay so you can have the hatch open or closed so you got to fit that in at this stage um, with the ball mount machine gun get that put into place and also the uh, drivers and the uh, radio operator gun all the gun machine gunners hatches they've got to be fitted as well they're easy fit because they just pop in and uh, poly cap onto them then and they'll work so yippee no so I get as far as step 15 done we come back we'll have a look at it and again like I said remember I was saying earlier on in the um, the unboxing about this uh, this tow rope they could, tow, tow, I mean, they could have pre sort of molded them in that position but they didn't they have them uh, they have them dead straight so I'm gonna try and you know get it bent into position if it works it works if it doesn't I'm not going to worry too much about it and um, if it doesn't work I'll snip it there and you know make my own bit of uh, cable or like I've done it a couple of times in the past just not bother with cables at all but uh, I'll probably you know I can see myself ending up having to make my own cable for it but uh, if I do I'll show you how I make the cable anyway it's quite simple just make yourself up a little jig and we can get that done so I'll get a start for step 15 come back and have a look at that and see how all that works Right, here we go, I'm back to instructions again. Yes, back to the old instructions. Right, I'm after making up this little thing here, the gun um, barrel carriage. Here we are. Um, where they join here, I heated screwdriver. Little screwdriver like that, just a small one. As you can see, I heated it up, because I have to turn my fingers back there. Okay, and there it is hinge all heated up and everything else so therefore the hinge will work okay very easy doesn't take that not that hard at all to do right that gets fitted down into the thing so you can raise and lower it and put the gun into it if that is what you want okay 
that's that bit, pack 10. Step 11, we made up the um, utensil container. Okay, it was two halves and two end pieces. And as you see, you made that glued together and cleaned up absolutely beautiful as well. Okay, the, the join is actually along there. So as you, can, as you can see, that cleaned up really, really nice. Okay, and there's our end caps. Okay. Now, with the, um, the utensil racks, I'm after fitting one, and like I said, I'm not going putting on the tools until a later date. Okay. Um, I'm after fixing up this thing here for the driver's vision window thingy. Okay, I'm after putting in the whole machine gun. I'm also after doing the um, the, the drivers and the radio operator gun machine gunner's hatch. Okay, um, I'm after fitting the um, the holder there for the spare tracks. I'm not after fitting the spare tracks because I want to get the painting done first and uh, then do the tracks you know paint the tracks separately and then pop them on just so you'll see that they're um that there's the, ca the camouflage behind them do you know what i mean the tracks were added afterwards uh and after fitting the uh tools here the sort of the crowbar tanker bar whatever they call it the uh, sledgehammer and i'm after fitting the uh the rack without actually fitting the tools themselves and I'm after giving a bend to the um, to the tow rope as well. It needs a little bit more work bending in the tow rope but I think I'll actually get it there believe it or not. I think I'll actually uh, succeed in what I was wanting to do. So let's have a look there at the uh, just at the upper hull. Okay like I said we've got our, uh, our hatches. Okay there's one hatch two hatch okay or a whole machine gun movable right there's the holder there for the uh the, the driver's windy hatch and after fitting the uh the tool racks there and the rack here for the spare tracks and if you look on the inside a must also after fitting that little yoke there for the uh for the driver now like i said i haven't decided how i'm going to fit the driver yet but i just fitted that thing anyway it's no harm I, if i don't want to use it or i hate the size of it i can always break it off or cut it off later but i carry on with the way the instructions say for the time being anyway you know why not anything anything can be changed and like i said there's the uh, the tore up bent into reasonable enough the position that i want it to go in okay uh, we'll need a little bit more straightening up that hooks on there that goes down under the tools and hooks up then up there all right so as you can see it'll do i just need to just needs a little bit more cleaning up just have to be uh, a little bit more careful with it okay so what have we left now we're on to basically the the, the top of the deck and fitting the uh, more tools and things basically we're on the other side of this okay we're, we've done a lot of stuff on that side now we're going to work on this side okay and the top so what have we got to put on the top we've got to find that um, travel lock and um, we've got a couple of handles uh, we've lifting hooks there for them to go on um, got some more handles here we've got the tracks like I said so there's that track holder bar to go on we've got the, um, the tool thingy me jiggy tube the tool tube and we've another that hold the other holder for the tools and we've got the um height and we're also fitting the, the the actual hatch itself there onto that All right and like i said i'm going to do that little experiment with my little mesh which we will take out in the next one um we'll see how it goes 
and if it works I'm going to stick it on there with the mesh I'll stick them on over the uh, over the covers there's one two three four five six six little mesh covers there that can go on um, yeah we can we can we can do we can do them we will we will do them and I'll have a look and you know see if it works if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't we're not going to lose any sleep if it doesn't because we like I said we're making the kit out of the box but if we can add something nice and cheap onto it that's not going to cost us a fortune we'll go ahead and we'll get that done so I'll get them done anyway that's uh, step 16 right uh, step 17 is just fitting the two pieces together I don't know it's a waste of making sort of to be quite honest with you it's a waste of making two f full steps just to, to push it together basically they'll tell you that making two steps out of it and we got to do our melting of the tracks so I'll do the melting of the tracks and basically then believe it or not that's it that, 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 that's it finished okay there's a very very little on it very very little indeed so you know that's why I said I'll uh, we'll play around with it and we see what more we can add to it or what we can do to it to make it uh, to make it a little bit better or to um, enhance it exactly enhance it a little bit better okay so I get those little bits done we come back we'll have a look at that and we'll see what more we're going to do then to enhance it things like our mesh here on the uh, on, on the grills for the uh, engine deck and uh, might do a bit of a uh, bit of shell damage don't know yet we might uh, we'll see how it goes okay so back in a sec okay so there we are after finishing off the uh, oops after finish off the, the construction of the vehicle um no it gives you all the uh, tracks here for the sides right and here they are, they're on a little sprue there, okay, well I've actually cut the sprue off, it's off the, the larger sprue, right? Now if you look at it from this side, oh, sorry, we've got a bit of light hidden there, now if you look at it from that side, there you see, nice old, you know, reasonable bit of detail on them, you know. Okay, there's a couple of uh, sprue gates marks or whatever, you know, uh, injector pin marks, that's what we could always have. But uh, you know they can be sanded out. It doesn't have the uh, the grid markings in it. But then again, the thing is, you actually use them on that side. You know, you, you kind of you hang them up here and you, you, you join them all together. Which I suppose you know is all well and grand, except for the fact that there is absolutely no detail at all on that side of them. Right none whatsoever and that's the side that you're going to see so I've decided I am not going to use them I prefer not to have any rather than have something that looks horrible simple little thing do you know what I mean um, if it's not there you won't miss it unless it's an obvious major obvious piece like obviously if the barrel is uh, crap and you don't want to use it you can't exactly have it with no barrel on it but little things like this um, I mean I cut it off that so it would be easier for painting and then I just just got sick in the fact that there's no detail there in the back of those and that is horrible and I'm not going to use them whatsoever so I, I'm going to have a look and see if I got any other you know, spare track links pa panther track links um, I might have there because I've a, a Cervezda uh, panther there that um, Simon Kemp sent me on that he butchered half of it and you, you know he wanted to do it for uh, inside of the house the thing that he was making uh, he cut sort of big chunks out of the back of it and things. Uh, he sent it on to me, you know, for you know, for parts and things. Uh, I did try to make the tracks, but God, they were horrible. They were really, really bad. I couldn't make them at all. Um, so I do have a lot of those parts. So if I, if the tracks are good on that, I'm going to use them on it. No, like I said, I mean, there's the figures. Okay, there's our commander. And here is our driver. Right. Now it does give you a bottom half and the driver gives you his legs, but they're freaking huge, they're really weird. And you're not going to see them anyway, and it tells you not to use them. So but 
even at that you're not going to fit him in from the top like that okay you're not going to get him in there no matter how hard you try so he will have to be glued in you know before before you kind of finish it off or before you join the two pieces together and like I said I want to join the two pieces together um, and you know because there's a, a, a line a seam line there that I want to kind of close up okay because I want to close up that I want to, want to glue it um, so you know I'm going to have to glue in, in there a bit of masking over it when I'm doing the painting so I'm not really worried too much about that I can have him in there and I can have him mask. So you only stick up a small little bit, really it's only just his head and the bare bit of his shoulders. So that will be easy enough to mask off. Um, yeah, I am going to use them, even though they're not great, I, I'm still going to use them anyway. So now is the time to decide what bit of uh, damage I'm going to do to it. Bit of, uh, bit of, you know, shell impacts and that kind of thing. Um, and believe it or not, I've decided not to do any. Yep, I've decided not to do any damage to it whatsoever because I'm usually I'm, I'm always cutting off fenders and things like that, um, and this time I've decided not to do any damage to it whatsoever. Okay, no damage, none whatsoever. Uh, any damage and things like that will be done in the weathering stages. Now I'll just pop this apart because I want to use the inside. Okay. I think I want to use the inside, and I'll show you exactly why I want to use the inside of it. Okay, now to get it apart, you just sort of push it forward slightly and pop it out. Right, now well, I just want to use the underside of that here, just a bit of plastic, a bit of pair of plastic. Because if you remember, I said I have this stuff here. Now, this is that uh, mesh, dressmaker's mesh type stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it, give it a little bit of a test. Now I haven't tested it before this. So what I do is I'm going to cut off a small little section. Now I know it will hold with super glue, but I don't want to go down the line with super glue because it's just for, for what I want to use it for, it's just that little bit too messy. Okay, but what I will do want to use and see what does it work with is a bit of this. Okay, a bit of contact a professional. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to smear a bit of the contact tape onto that. I'm going to put my mesh down on it. Like that. And see where it stick. I'm going to come back now in about five minutes and see has that stuck. But first indication is telling me that that is sticking nicely to it. Okay. So I'm going to leave that now for a couple of minutes. Then we're going to come back to it. We're going to try and remove it and see how good it uh, how good it adheres to it. And if it works, I'm going to use it here on those little sections. So, I'm just going to stop the tape there. We come back in uh, five minutes for me, to five seconds for you, and uh, we'll see what that is. Uh, what that is like. Okay. Now I'm after giving that less than five minutes, and I'm happy with the way that is stuck. Okay. Now it is. I am able to remove it, but it leaves a nice imprint. So therefore it's actually sticking and it doesn't damage it's not melting this so I'm happy enough with that okay so I'm going to apply that stuff now onto onto here so what I did was I'm after cutting out uh, the rough shapes here as you can see I have two small two, four uh, little ones here for the uh, back grills two pieces here for the for these two grills I'm going to stick them on uh, once they're glued in place and, 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 and set and well set as in an overnight set I just I'll, I'll trim them all off so I'm happy enough with that now okay now there is a hole here so I'm gonna have to get a kind of a cover for that so I'll have to sort of look in my spares box and see can I find something to cover that and uh, also like I said I'm going to look and see how I got um, 
some tracks and things okay so I'm gonna get all these sort of glued into place <laughs> I'm gonna check out some tracks and things and uh, we'll come back then we'll have a look at it just before I sort of uh, get ready then for the painting so next time you see it I'll have the uh, the meshes glued into place and I'll have decided whether what tracks I'm going to use or if I'm going to use any at all okay so back in a sec and uh, all that should be done okay then so here it is um, already now um, I'm after adding on a few little bits and pieces I'll show you now in a second what they are um, the last time you saw it now you saw it basically as the kit came and here's a couple of bits and pieces that I'm after adding on to it myself shall we say okay but right. did come with the figures um, he will literally have to be kind of glued in the stand and position up there. He won't stay unless he's glued, so we won't worry about that. Um, I'm not putting on these little uh, towing hooks here at the front. I'm after fitting the tools. I know I said I wasn't going to fit the tools, but after looking at them and everything else, I said I might as well go ahead and fit them. Um, it would actually be easier to paint them on than rather than paint them off. Um, I've had to fit in the tore up there and extra little uh, bracket, a little bracket up here, just where it kind of bends around, so it would be sort of bent around that. It would droop down and up to here. I'd like a better droop, but I'm happy enough with that. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm after using the tracks here. They're off the uh, Zvezda Panther. Also back here on the engine deck, uh, the two covers here that to me don't don't actually give you with this kit. The two little covers there on the back of the, uh, the engine deck. Um, after fitting the uh, that mesh, um, slight little bit of a problem back here. I might have to kind of re-glue that down a bit. Um, the, Torrent is catching it there, so I'm going to have to fix that. Fix it at that side. Um, some more tracks here at that side. Um, also, we pop off the torque because I want to show you that I, had to, I, I, I got. As you see, I have the driver in. Okay, I got him in place. Um, a lot of butchering involved with the poor old driver, but uh, I've got him now that I can fit him down the hole. All right. And when I say a lot of butchering involved, I mean a lot of butchering involved. I had to chop, chop off his hands, I've had to shave them down a bit, you know, sanding them all and everything to get them into place, and uh, giving him a false bottom. <laughs> but that false bottom basically, so the, just a bit of glue there and that, and he will, that's just the right height then for him to go in there. Oops, so there we see, there we go. Now that thing is on the base of the thing, so it's just his head sticking up. I also glued the um, that hatch here open. I have another two of those little hooks back here as well. Okay, one here and one here. So that's really all I've uh, after adding to it. Not much, but uh, I think it, it kind of uh, finishes off the the, uh, the kit quite nicely. Um, it is a pity that to me I don't give you decent enough tracks to go on there. Um, at least these tracks are nice, they have the hollowed out guide horns and everything else which are correct. And a uh, little handy tip there with the mesh using that dressmaker's uh, mesh. Um, it does a perfect job on those. So when I be might shut up outside. <laughs> oh, that's all. Oh, yeah, I also added my, my usual antenna. From the, uh, um, if you go back over my videos, you'll find out how I make those with a guitar string. So I'm after adding an antenna or aerial, whatever you want to flip and call it. Okay, so that's it now for the build video. That's it for uh, build update number one. Don't forget to join me later on for build update number two, where we'll get it all painted and finished off. So in the meantime, enjoy your modelling. Go out and buy yourself a kit build it and enjoy it. It's John signing off. I'll catch you in the next one lads. Stay safe.